a uh, an oddly common theme across dating sites is a fear of birds and <laughs> in women. I don't know what it is, but if if anyone knows and can comment it down, why so many women are afraid of birds, please let us know. Absolutely. Oh, that's that's corny. What? I don't think that would appeal to someone that's terrible. who's afraid of birds. That's terrible. <laughs> that's really bad. Maybe don't rely on Riz GPT for dating apps <laughs> yet. Welcome back to the Goat Marketing Show. I'm your host, John. Welcoming back our other host, Ben. Uh, <laughs> how's it going? Good. You're like uh, the Conan O'Brien and I can be your, is it Andy Richter? Yeah. Yeah. That's who it is. <clears throat> yeah. I'm good with that. Except does he, how much does Andy Richter actually talk in that? He's like color commentary just off to the side. No, I've never actually really watched that. I forget the um, other ones. I'm uh, Guillermo. On yeah, Jimmy there Kimball. we go. Now we're cooking. Um, yeah. Uh, welcome back. Um, happy Friday. We got a, yeah, happy Friday. We got a, a few uh, new segments today to go through. Um, yeah, why don't we just jump on into it? Again, I have no idea what we're getting into. I guessed one of the segments, but. Our first segment today is called Go Make Your Own. Oh. And this is not going to be as, as interactive for you, Ben. But um, I just wanted to go through. There's a, a cool kind of recent thing that ChatGPT has done that I don't know how many people are actually using this function, but. Um, I know Doug is a big proponent of it. They've started making, you can make your own instance of GPT. So you can customize it to uh, have its own set of source information that it draws on and you can do some cool things. So I just wanted to just quickly look at a few of these cool things that you can do with these. Like, Let's say you want help booking your flights, hotels, and your rental cars. There you go. Now there's a GPT for that. Or if you wanted to turn yourself into a cartoon, we could definitely do that sometime. I'm writing that one down. We're, we're definitely, I just noticed that. Um, or like, let's Have you used the, v, the Veed one? Because I know you use Veed. Ooh, I should. I'm writing that one down too. Yeah, Veed is a, for anyone watching this, Veed is a great AI uh, video editor if you uh, are looking for something like that. But um, there's a whole bunch of other, like, I like especially the, so there's obviously like a bunch of practical ones like uh, with like image creation and writing and productivity. But if you go to the bottom, there's some life, lifestyle ones that are pretty cool, like this one is a game and I wrote this one down today too. I think we should play this at some point. It's basically like a, like, it's kind of like D and D like you. It, oh yeah. It Choose sets your own the adventure. scene for you and you decide, and then it generates the next step. So we could play that at some point or like healthy eating or, um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of, or like what movie should I watch next based on what I like? So there's some cool stuff, uh, to explore there. And uh, I'll get into a couple of these here. So the first one that that I think is is good, especially from like an accessibility standpoint, is uh, it's called Mio One, and you can see it at the bottom here. It's actually a plugin for your browser, so that it reads out the answers for you, and you can actually talk. So like, I got GBT to write this little story here, so um, I could so let's talk to Mia. Oh. What is that? Don't like that. Let's talk to me here. So, oh, crap. I did what everyone does with this thing. <laughs> oh, that's so dumb. Like, let's say, 
write me a one paragraph summary of this story. Boom. And then I've got it set to a, a UK voice. In here. a quaint village, renowned clockmaker Elias harbors an unfinished masterpiece, a silent clock hidden in his shop. So the voice is still sounds like a robot, but at least it's someone reading it out and like that's got to be good for accessibility and and uh, so that oh, was yeah. a cool one. Yeah, you don't even need to type now to use ChatGPT. Another cool one that I got here is uh, <laughs> this one's called Jiggle Jiggle, <laughs> and uh, the actual GPT is called Riz GPT, which is nice. a bad name. But this helps you if you're on like a dating app and you need help coming up with messages. So what would you like? Let's do like. Um, uh, like I want to do something like. Like do uh, <laughs> do come up with a, a pickup line. For uh, a girl whose biggest fear is birds. Yeah. A uh, an oddly common theme across dating sites is a fear of birds and <laughs> in women. I don't know what it is, but if if anyone knows and can comment it down, why so many women are afraid of birds? Please let us know. Absolutely, let's create a playful pickup. Here. Oh, that's that's corny. What? I don't think that would appeal to someone that's terrible. who's afraid of birds. That's terrible. <laughs> that's really bad. Maybe don't rely on Riz GPT for dating apps <laughs> yet. I want to see what data they use for this. Like, how do they get it to be a like a? It's obviously not great at it. Anyway, that's pathetic. Yeah, that was, that was really horrible. Hey, I guess it's like everything with GPT is you got to edit it and try again. It's not going to always get it on its first try. See, there's lessons here. It's not all just jokes. But uh, the other one I wanted to show off here is uh, now I'm not big into astrology, but I know one person. About? I know one person who really would like their chart to be done by chat gpt and it's and it's ben so i'm absolutely dox ben here and i've put in his birthday and the time <laughs> and where he was born and uh we've got if you scroll down my social insurance numbers there <laughs> and my current address yeah his credit card my password <laughs> all my security answers the name of my first pet but here's a very specific only for ben reading of his birth chart that i'm sure this wouldn't say to anyone else not to build my own agenda in here but obviously ben's a saturn and aries in the ninth house retrograde i could have said that without looking at this um which i think that means that you need if i if i remember correctly i think that means that um your challenges and lessons in life may revolve around your beliefs and higher learning and uh, maybe travel even and uh, suggest that you might need to internalize these lessons deeply. So I hope you you uh, remember that one. Wow. I feel very vulnerable. <laughs> and that's the end of our segment. Um, Bang the chart. chart <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any questions about that? Anything you're curious about? I knew about I was a Scorpio, chart? but I see a lot of Sagittarius in there. Well, it says at the bottom here that you blend Scorpio's depth with Sagittarius's adventurous spirit. Oh, duh. Yeah. Which uh, could have told you that one too. But yeah. Um, yeah. There's your chart. So if anyone else do you, have a, do you have a soundboard for that one? For the for your chart? Yeah. For yeah. the completion of that segment. Yeah, here it is. 
I knew it was going to be no. <laughs> All right, on to our next segment. Mm. Um, well, I should have played this during the uh, raised one. Oh. There we go. Okay. You're joking me. Moving on. It really doesn't want me to move on. There we go. Our next segment is called Bard or the Bard or Aiambic Pentameter. Pretty happy with that one. Wait. Bruh. There we go. <laughs> 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 I gotta get more seamless with this with this soundboard. It's a learning experience. Yeah, first time using it, working <laughs> out the working out the kinks. Um, so far okay. there's been no nudity on this episode, so you're already <laughs> improving from last week. <laughs> That's good to hear. Nice. Um, so this segment, Bard or the Bard. Um. I used one of the poetry GPTs to write a poem. I wrote one myself and I pulled a famous poem that I'd never heard of from the internet. So there's three poems and Ben, your job is to figure out which one I wrote, which one GPT wrote and which one is an actual published poem by a real poet. So our first one, <clears throat> is and I'm not giving you the names of them. This is just the poem. So I'll read this. I'll read these these out for everyone. I envy your simplicity. You surely know that with all the lights out in the city, but one, your life seems so quiet, although that's not a fact. But let me imagine myself in your bar just for fun. Let me live vicariously through you in that peaceful restaurant, patrons to serve. Let me enjoy just this moment of something new rather than live always on my last nerve. Your peace seems unattainable and unmatched. I wish I could achieve that which I dream you are. For to function with such ease, become so attached to a world so underwhelming would be better by far. But now I find that my jealousy for elementary and plain would ruin the excitement and adventure I seek to obtain. That cannot be AI. That's either you or a real one. All right, which well, is we'll funny see. because you are you are a poet, so you it would be a real one if it was you. We shall see. There's still two more to go, so you never know. Okay. Here's the second one. In the city's heart, a river flows, not of water, but of souls and woes. Skyscrapers rise like mountains steep, their shadows cast, secrets to keep. A symphony of lights in the night's embrace. Each window a story, each face a trace, each pain a tale in the neon's gleam, where dreams and glass and silence teem. Amid the chaos, a silent plea, in every eye and unspoken sea, yet in this maze of stone and light lives a rhythm bold and bright. A city, not just structures tall, but life, love, a siren's call. In its pulse, we find our own. In the vast, we're never alone. So far, I think the first one was you. This is the published one. And I, I want to see the third one, though. The reason I think this... The first two are not AI is because they flow so well. And I feel like the AI struggles with like the syllable scheme of a poem. All right. I like your thought process. Here's let's the, third, see the one. third one. Yeah. Let's see if this changes your mind or not. I have been one acquainted with the night. I have walked out in rain and back in rain. I have outwalked the furthest city light and have looked down the saddest city lane. I have passed by the watchman on his beat and dropped my eyes, unwilling to explain. I have stood still and stopped the sound of feet when far away an interrupted cry came over houses from another street, but not to call me back or say goodbye. And further still at any un at an unearthly height, one luminary clock against the sky proclaimed the time was neither wrong nor right. I have been one acquainted with the night. Wow, this is very difficult because that's <laughs> I think they're all really good. This is the problem. And now it's a tough call. What does your gut tell you? 
I just feel like the AI wouldn't do the same word in the same sentence, like the first, the second line here. Like rain? I have walked out in rain and back in rain. That's a very, like, writer's line. Mm -hmm. I now think the second one is the AI. Okay. Because of all the rhymes. I feel like it wouldn't write poetry without rhymes like that. This one, every other line rhymes. Every other line rhymes. But I feel like it still it wouldn't even do that. Mm. You think it would I think the, the first one's one I think the first one's you, the second one's AI, and the th third one is the published one, and that's my final answer. Final answer. That is correct. Three for three. <laughs> Let's go. The first one's the best one. In my oh, opinion. Yeah, the first one's mine. Yeah. That this is a poem I wrote for Writer's Craft in grade 12 that I just found. I on think my that's computer. really lovely. That's a lovely poem. And then this one was, yeah, this one was one of the poetry GPTs. And this one's called Acquainted with the Night by Robert Frost. So good job. That was impressive. I it, was I, it was, was deduction. Yeah. yeah. The second one is good, but it's too rhymy for, I think. Mm -hmm. Or the other ones aren't rhymy enough to be an AI. Fair enough. I think the one that gave it away for me or that uh, now I'm realizing is the punctuation in this one, like the the dashes and the semicolon. I don't think I wouldn't do that. And I don't think AI would do that. But um, on to our final segment here called the race to perfection. And this one, I just kind of want to go through um, some of the cool new developments we're seeing in, uh, in AI and some of the different uh, integrations we're seeing to certain things. The first one that I want to look at is, is Midjourney. Midjourney just put out a new uh, update, their Midjourney V6. And it's got some pretty cool image generation here. Like you can't really click on these and zoom in, but if I zoom in on my screen here, like some of these images are pretty nuts. An eagle attacking salad or these scales here. There's a, oh, a gold, a gold burger or like these matchsticks. Like these are pretty crazy to be AI generated. Like look at that woman. Like that's or the dragon. So the image generation is getting significantly better. Oh, very, yeah. Very there was quickly. one that was going popular recently on TikTok that I saw where the Eiffel Tower was on fire and people were believing it, which is kind of crazy because the Eiffel Tower is made like completely out of iron. And so like it can't catch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> but people are like in the comments like, oh, my gosh, this is so sad. I think I like this one. The shark swimming towards a beer. That's pretty badass. I would get a poster of that new phone background right there. But yeah, Mid Journey's doing some cool stuff. Um, I haven't used it a lot just because it runs through Discord and it confuses me, but um, definitely a worthwhile to tool to check out. Another uh, integration that we've found is Google has started their own image generation as well. It's called uh, Imagine, and you can see they they can do some cool things too. I mean, you knew that Google was going to come up with something like this eventually. Uh, it doesn't quite look as like robust as mid journey does yet but i think it's newer um sushi house like that dog's eyes are pretty messed up <laughs> <laughs> poor dog 
but they got some cool stuff there too. And the other company that's been doing it is, and some other stuff too, is, is Meta has a tool also called Imagine, but it's just spelled differently. And you can see they got some, some good stuff here too. You look at these and they're zoomed in, so they're kind of bad quality, but those are pretty good too. These just seem like, well, I guess that one's hyper realistic. It seems like Mid Journey might be the best one for like hyper realism, although that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Um, or the Northern Lights there. That butterfly one's awesome. Yeah. But um, I, I know that Meta is doing a lot more with like, if you're making ads on Meta, it will it started suggesting copy or even like auto filling copy for you. Um, so I think they're just trying to make everything more streamlined and automate a lot of things for, uh, for stuff on meta. So I feel like in terms of, of integration, meta is kind of leading the charge and in integrating AI into kind of everything that they're doing. Uh, I, I expect to see more companies following suit like Google and, and we've seen i've seen it on stuff like like canva obviously has a lot of it and mailchimp and other platforms like that so that's just a quick update on uh some of the cool things that are are happening still and how things are still getting better and people are still finding ways to to innovate and make some cool stuff so that's what i got for you today as always uh follow our stuff Oh, any final thoughts ben oh no, this the image stuff is um the next evolution that's going to make a really big difference i want to see like you be able to upload brand standards and svg files of logos and you can yeah. start making stuff that has text in it like yeah. have like this is the font i want on the text this is oh i saw I that for the h1 if you look at the mid journey ones they they had it all. Oh, there was one yesterday when I was looking at this that had text and they actually spelled the words right. Here's like, this one's not, yeah, this one didn't quite get it. It's close though. This is closer than I think we've it, yeah. seen. But I want to see these. like client logo transparent file like as yeah. a layer in it that you can, I guess you could just add it yourself after, but it'd be awesome to have that all saved in an instance and it can just go in and make you branded assets that are like appropriate to put out because yeah. it's really good for like art and photography right now but it's not good for like graphic design yeah that's true yeah i think that's why i like canva's ability is because it can do the like it obviously can't do this level of image generation well it kind of can but it also like then you can do the graphics and the logo and stuff pretty easily as well. But I did see one yesterday that they actually got the text right in all four of the images, which was impressive. But yeah. Anyway. Um, I think that's all we got for today. So uh, until next week. Oh, I, I should have a, a some sort of thing to finish us off here on the soundboard. Hmm. Wait, ready? Ready? Today's the it's the end of today's video. All right. Take care everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye.